Welcome to First Baptist Clinton. We are glad that you're here to worship with us today. We gather to celebrate and express our love for God because he has first loved us. And this season of the year invites, reminds us of, of his incredible love for us as he came to be among us, to dwell among us. And not just to, not to just live among humanity, but to ultimately give his life for humanity in the, in the greatest expression of his love for us. And so we are here today to worship him and to declare our love for him. And we're grateful that you have joined us in this experience of worship. Um, we are a praying people. So I would invite you to share prayer requests with us. If you're in the room, we have a prayer requests slip that you can place in the offering plate in, uh, as you leave this morning. If you join us online today, you may share prayer requests with us by using the text new to FBC at 97,000 or on our website. Uh, we have a, a prayer wall and you can share the prayer requests prayer requests there. If you happen to be a guest today, thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. Again, in the room, there's a slip of paper. If you join us online, just text NEW to FBC at 97,000. We'll get the, we will get the information and the record of your being our guest today. We are so grateful that you have joined us to worship today. And, and, and so let's stand together and proclaim it. Angels we have heard on high.
be seated. This morning our Advent theme is love, and Lannings, if you wouldn't mind, just come on up and uh, let me just say one word, more than one word. We know we all are familiar with the uh, verse John 3:16, for God so loved the world. And the world not only refers to all of humanity, but to each of us individually. And uh, this morning, we celebrate his love. And part of our time of worship this morning is to not only reflect on his love for us, but to offer our love right back to him. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and my salvation. salvation. Whom, Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe, I believe that, that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. Our deacon of the week this morning is Keith Ross, and he's not with us in the room, but uh, his phone number is in our worship program. I thought, okay, I thought we had, okay. My, well, we got, we don't have, we'll, we'll have everybody call Keith for Ron, <laughs> only if there's a skunk involved. Masked and all. But uh, the other day I was uh, watching a program on World War I, had five or six shows, and they had went through the uh, pandemic, the great flu pandemic, back in 1718 during the war. And I'm thinking, you know, if uh, this had happened back then, maybe it's not as deadly, but it seemed like it's a lot more contagious. So the progress that's been made through the years that allows us to develop a vaccine and get all this done it's nothing god put all that together so fortunately we're living a time that's not where we just kind of have to sit back and let it pass so hopefully this will all pass in a few months down the road by summertime we'll be back to normal and we can all see each other smile and get together and have a good time so let's uh, pray and we'll see what happens okay Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for guiding us through this uh, pandemic as we go through uh, life and we look to you for answers. And uh, we just pray that you would be with everyone now as they uh, get this vaccine hopefully approved and out through, the, through our nation and through the world that uh, we could all go back to our normal lives. And we pray for those who have just been so affected by it, by loss of jobs and just uh, and deaths from loved ones uh, all around the world. And uh, just look to you for your guidance and, uh, and your love, and may we all enjoy this season coming up. Regardless of what's happening in our world, we know that our Lord is there for us, and it's through him that we will see him again. So your son's name we pray. Amen. So I'll stand together and read our psalm reading aloud. This is uh, from Psalm 85. Read aloud with me, please. You, Lord, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. I will listen to what the God of the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. But let them not turn to fall. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness and peace, peace each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield his harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Psalm 85, 1 and 13. It's actually 1 and 2. Yeah, that's okay. Have a seat.
Amen. Remain standing, please, while we uh, read from Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for the way. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I will baptize you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Mark 1, 1 through 8.
I have some Windsor Greyhound fans in the crowd. So congratulations to the Greyhounds on the first ever Class 1A state championship yesterday in the football game. I was thinking about it. These guys will not remember COVID. Those coaches and teams will remember one thing. <laughs> They'll just remember that championship. COVID will be a thing of past in their mind, and I pray it will soon be a thing of past in our, all of our minds. So, um, you know, we, it has, COVID-19 has claimed so much of our attention that sometimes I fear that we may have lost our um, perspective on the mission. Um, and so let me let me just pause for a minute because we lost our setting, <laughs> and that way I'll get Kevin on our setting while I work on this. So um, we um, we forget that it's not about us. You see what. COVID is doing to all of us is causing us to just turn inward and we think about ourselves and we, we think about our, um, you know, our friends who, who have um, contracted it. Uh, we worry about those of us who have not gotten it. You know, when's it coming? Kind of, a, kind of a thing for all of us. But it is, it is and so... I, it's one of the reasons I love this season, because the season of Advent reminds us that there's something more to come, something more to come. And as we, um, as, as we go through this season, I want to make sure that we are reminded of two of the great truths of the New Testament, because this brings us back to our mission. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. That uh, there's not a single person alive on the face of the planet who does not need Jesus. And our mission is to bring Jesus to each and every one of them, locally and globally, near and far. Our task is to bring the good news of Jesus, to celebrate the advent of the one who, who is coming so that they know Jesus. They know him personally, and they have experienced his redeeming love and transforming grace in their lives. You see, our mission is is to see to it that everybody knows about Jesus. So, great New Testament truth. Everybody needs Jesus. And we need each other, which is the second of those truths. Something's not working right again. So, um, we need each other. Uh, one of the things that COVID does is it separates us. It keeps us apart. It isolates us. That is the tool of the devil. Because he knows if he can get us alone, we are weakened. We need each other. We need connection with one another. We, we, need, we, we need each other. The, uh, individually, collectively, you know, our, our church needs other healthy churches in the community. And we all need each other so that we can lift one another up and encourage one another and help each other. And we are participants in this great multitude of believers who are found at the throne of, uh, of Jesus and the Father. So... Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I looked, and there was before me a great multitude that no one could count from every 
nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell down on their faces before the throne, and they worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Wow. What a scene. What a vision uh, was given to John of people from every nation, tribe, and people, and language. You see, it's the most phenomenal gathering of people you can imagine. There are people who were accepted before God. They they have the privilege of standing before the throne and before the Lamb, sealed by the grace of God. They They are at home as God's people just right there at the throne, before the throne and the Lamb. They have, the fact that they are there in, points to and reminds us that they have been purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. They were wearing white robes symbolizing the future status of purity and the resurrection glory that all of us will one day experience. And they were victorious they're holding these palm branches in their hands. And last, as I mentioned last week, to think about the party balloons. They've, they've got the balloons up. And they, are, and they offer a joyful shout of victory. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The first word spoken in heaven by the assembly of of the redeemed people are praise for God's salvation. Salvation is holy God's work. It's we we don't we don't it's not something we do. It's not something we earn. It's not something we deserve. It is fully God's work. And they 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 acknowledge that before his throne because we cannot take credit For the salvation we have experienced. Because it is the free gift from God. God Almighty is on his throne. He is sovereign. And by his sovereign grace. Jesus and the Lamb. By his redemptive work. Have provided for each and every person. On the face of the planet. Full salvation. Every nation. Every tribe. Every people and every language. Not a single person ever on the place of the planet is outside of the provision of God for salvation by His love and grace and mercy. And so the vision that Jesus placed in John's mind is of a great multitude of worshipers at his at the throne of God in heaven worshipers from every nation tribe people and lang- people and language group as as a believer in Jesus you are a part of this great multitude you will one day join in the joyful victory shout Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, so we should practice it now. Say it with me. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Well, we're not quite ready for it yet, so let's go again. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. One more time. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Don't you just feel like you're part of the multitude? You are. We are part of the multitude. One day, John the Baptist was with two of his disciples and 
when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, or behold, the Lamb of God. And when the the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. And Andrew, Simon's Peter brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, and he had followed Jesus. Andrew... Andrew appreciated the value of a single soul. He was not known for bringing large groups of people to Jesus, but he is known for bringing people to Jesus one at a time. Almost every time you see Andrew in the Gospels, he's bringing somebody to Jesus. The first thing Andrew did when, when well, after, he, after he had followed Jesus, the first thing that he did was he went to get his brother and he went and he found Simon Peter, who is his brother, to tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought Peter to Jesus. He just sent, you know, brings Peter to Jesus. So he he brought his brother. He brought somebody he loved. Just just one. Just one. So I ask you this morning. Who is your one? Who is your one? That person you love and you want you want more than anything else. For them to be in the multitude. And they have not yet confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. And declared Him publicly. But you want them. You want them. In the multitude. On another occasion Jesus and was uh, on a hillside. And it was lunchtime, And there was not enough food. And Andrew... Simon Peter's brother spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. How far will that go among so many? Well, you know the story. It went a long way. 5,000 men were fed. That's not counting the women and children who were in the crowd. So it went a long way because it received the touch of the master. But think about it. He, he he brought a boy with a lunch to Jesus. He's a stranger. I want you to think for a few minutes. You know, we all meet people who need Jesus, and and I'm not very good at this. And so when I talk about this, I I know the struggle of. Sharing the gospel with strangers. But they're out there. And once in a while, God will give me just enough energy and, to, and convict me enough that I will say something to a stranger about Jesus. The strangers in my world and in your world need Jesus too. What about a friend? What about a friend? You know, we all have friends who need to know Jesus. And could we be like Andrew and just bring them to Jesus? Who who is your one? That friend or even a stranger? That you would do anything to bring to Jesus. You see, it's a great multitude who gather at the throne of God. And our task is to increase the multitude. So, who, who do you want to see included in the great multitude? 
Who claims the attention of your prayers? Who is it that you you weep over because you know they do not know Jesus? Who is the one that you want in this multitude enough to lay aside your fear and say, I want you in the multitude? Who is the one that you want in the multitude? Who's that one that more than anything else you want them? In the multitude. If they're sitting next to you, just give them a little love nudge to remind them you want them. You want them in the multitude with you. Who is your one? Who is your one? We're we're celebrating the advent of Jesus. We're approaching the beginning of a new year. And in 2021, who will be your one? Don't wait till then. We all live with a very short fuse, so to speak. That's not about anger, you know. Our candles are burning. They will burn out. And so there's an urgency to the who in your life and in my life. So over the next few days, just think about the who. Maybe maybe you could just share some light in our community. One of our members had this idea about lighting up Christmas in our community. Simple little handmade cardboard kind of paper lantern with a tea light in it. And a little card that says... If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hand it. Make one. Make one. Hand it to your who, just so they will know. You want them in the multitude of with you. By the way, we have the supplies. All you have to do is supply the hot glue. Okay? So catch me later if you want to make one of those. We've got the stuff to do it with so that you can carry those out. Who? Who will we seek out? Who will we seek to find in this in this season of Advent so that they might be added to the great multitude. A great multitude of people who proclaim salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Know this, if we confess our sins He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so we will be ready to be in the crowd around his throne. And your who can easily join you through the confession of our sins. We are ready to for his presence. And if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be included in the great multitude. So this morning, 
I ask you, if, if you're here today and you know you're not part of the multitude because you've never publicly confessed Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, we want you in the multitude. And so, if you would, if you would just step into the lobby in a moment when we sing, visit with Ron or Josh, Josh, pray with them, enter into the multitude of people who will worship at the throne. You know, we, we want you, we want you in the multitude. And if, if you're looking for a church home, we want you among us to be a part of our fellowship and a part of our family and a part of our mission in this community and beyond. And if you're looking for a church home, we'd welcome you to step into the lobby. Or if you join us online this morning and you need and, and you desire to publicly confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, just press the I want Jesus in my life button. If you're interested in uniting with our church, go to the I want Jesus in my life button. Just fill out the information for us and we'll sort out the details of that with you later. But we want you to be a part of the great multitude and we want you to be part of us because everybody needs Jesus. And we need each other. We stand together to sing. I invite you to make your response because of the incredible love of Jesus.